Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and we're continuing our look at ARM-based Windows laptops with this new one from Lenovo. This is their IdeaPad 5X. It is a two-in-one, so you can use it as a laptop or you can use it as a touch display entertainment device here or snap it into a tablet configuration. And of course, they still have their tent mode here as well if you want to do that. So lots of different ways to use this one and it comes with a pen. And this is powered by a Snapdragon X Plus processor. This is not as powerful as the Snapdragon X Elite that we looked at from three different manufacturers about a month or two ago. So this is the more budget offering. And as such, it won't have the performance that we saw earlier, although it's still pretty good, I think, for an ARM-based laptop. But there are still lots of gotchas to talk about. We're gonna get into this in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own and no one has reviewed or approved this review before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this ARM-based Windows laptop is all about. Now at the moment, this costs $849 and for the performance that you're about to see, I think it is a little bit on the higher side of things. Although this does go on sale quite frequently and you might be able to find lesser configurations for less money. Now the one we have here today, again, is powered by that Snapdragon X Plus processor. This is the eight core version, which is the lower end of the lower end chips. And I always like getting in these lower end ones so we can see what the base level looks like. This has 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM and a one terabyte SSD. I do believe you could swap out the SSD if you want, but the RAM is soldered onto the main board, but it is good to see that it has 16 gigabytes. The display on this is quite nice. It is a 14 inch touch display. It is an OLED display, so you get very nice deep blacks and very vivid color on it. I'm very pleased with how this looks. This is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio running at 1900 by 1200, effectively a 1080p display, and it covers 100% of DCI P3. So you can do some creative work on here because the colors will be accurate. The display runs at 60 Hertz and is nice and bright at 400 nits, but it does not appear to have an HDR mode, at least one I could find in the system settings or in the specifications that they sent along with the laptop here, but still a very nice display for the price point here. I really like the OLEDs. From a size and weight perspective, it is Fairly compact and portable. It weighs 3.28 pounds, a little on the heavier side, I suppose, or 1.49 kilograms. It does, though, have a big battery on board, and combined with that Snapdragon chip, the battery life on this is exceptional. I'm looking at like 15 or 16 hours like using the laptop, and I'm sure you could squeeze a little bit more out of the battery life here if you keep the display brightness down and uh, stick to more general computing tasks. It is a very power efficient laptop as all of these Snapdragon devices are, and that would likely be the big reason to choose an ARM-based Windows laptop over one running with an Intel or AMD processor. The battery life dis differences are beginning to get a little bit closer between the more traditional chips and these ARM chips, but uh, nonetheless, the Snapdragon devices are best suited for those in need of very long battery life. It also charges up very quickly as well. So I was very pleased with battery life on this one as I've been on all of the other ARM-based devices. I would just look at display brightness here as a big factor because this is a nice bright OLED display. If you keep it at full brightness all the time, that will impact battery life significantly. So again, brightness down, general tasks like movie watching and word processing, and you will get a lot of battery life out of this laptop. Keyboard and trackpad here are quite nice. You've got nice full-size Lenovo keys, the very same keyboard we see on all of their other idea pads. Good key travel, nice and comfortable. It is backlit, no worries there. You've got a very functional fingerprint reader down here and the usual fare with their trackpad as well. So from an entry standpoint, if you've ever used a Lenovo device in the last five or six years, this will be very much the same experience. They make good keyboards and trackpads and this one is no exception to that rule. As for ports, you do get a good number of them on here. So we do have an HDMI output along with two full service USB type C ports. These are though uh, 10 gigabit gen two ports and not USB four or Thunderbolt. So you are a little bit limited there, but you can get three displays output simultaneously at 4K out of the HDMI along with the two USB ports here using a dongle. 
You can also charge it on either port as well if you want to do that. Headphone microphone jack is over here. On the other side, you've got your uh, SD card slot here for augmenting its onboard storage along with two full-size USB-A slots and your power button. So a very nice port configuration on this, even though it doesn't have the fastest ports available, it is still all very functional. Now this does have a 1080p webcam up at the top of the display. It looks pretty nice here, as you can see. Nothing fancy, but it does get the job done. This is a Copilot Plus PC, so there are some features that you can employ to improve the image using onboard AI. We've covered some of those features in another video. Nothing spectacular, I think, from the AI standpoint, but it might help improve the image quality slightly. You also have a shutter here at the top, a manual one, for blocking the lens for privacy. Let's take a look now and see how the laptop performs. So let's begin with the basics here. We'll start off with some web browsing like we always do. And I'm using the Brave browser. This is based on the same open source code as the Chrome browser, but it is a little more privacy centric. And this browser is optimized for the ARM processor inside of this machine. So it's not running uh, Intel software in compatibility mode here. And my web browsing experience has been pretty good on this. Everything feels pretty fast and responsive here. I can use the touch display to navigate and things pop up here very quickly. This has a Wi-Fi 7 radio on board. I have a Wi-Fi 6 access point in my ceiling not too far away. Um, and all in for doing basic web browsing, this is going to be just fine. And a little bit earlier, I ran a 1080p 60 frames per second video from my YouTube channel. I had one drop frame when it started, but after that, everything was playing back without issue. So if you are someone who's going to spend some time on YouTube or Netflix or some other streaming video service, I think you will have a good experience here. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 21.8. And you can see how this stacks up against the Snapdragon X Elite we've looked at on two different computers along with the Intel Core Ultra 5, which is what you'll typically see in a laptop at around this price point. So let's take a look at some video editing. There's a great video editor called DaVinci Resolve that has a free version, and they've recently optimized this for ARM-based laptops like this one, so we can see how well a more complex application works. We're going to load up a 4K60 video project here. And the type of editing I'm going to do is the same type of editing I do on this channel overall, which is some basic uh, cuts here between two clips. So I'll play this back here real quick. You can see playback looks pretty smooth, no problems there. Let's run over to the transition window here and drop in a cross dissolve. And let's see how well that cross dissolve renders itself in real time here. We won't give it much time to think about it. We'll hit the button here, and as you can see, it works pretty quickly to give us the result without any real noticeable lag. So for doing basic video editing, you're going to be just fine on this machine. And if you're doing more complex work, you'll probably want something beefier with a discrete GPU. Now, as I mentioned, some configurations, including the one that I got, come with a pen. And the pen actually feels quite nice on this display. One problem I have with all of these pens is that I'm always hitting these buttons by accident and initiating the eraser, as you saw. So I have to just get it positioned correctly on my uh, fingers here. Um, but as I write, as you can see, it is ignoring my wrist input. And there's very minimal latency on the pen here as I write. Another thing I noticed is that it doesn't feel slippery. There's a bit of friction there. So the pen doesn't just slide all over the screen. It's got a nice bit of uh, grip to it so it doesn't get all uh, out of whack on you there. So very good for note taking. You could probably do some drawing on it as well. And you've got a very nice 14 inch display here in which to do that. So, so far so good. Everything's been running quite nicely on here. We've got great battery life. Where do things go off the rails? Well, they go off the rails when you start looking at applications that were not necessarily designed for these ARM processors. Microsoft and Qualcomm have done a lot of work to mitigate a lot of the compatibility issues across the platform, but those issues still remain. I can't give you a tried and true list of what works and what doesn't. Most of the more popular applications like Office and web browsers all work fine, but if you've got some specialized application that runs on Intel or AMD hardware and has done so for years, it may not run so great on here, and it's always a hit or miss thing as to how that software will perform. 
if you look at gaming, that's where things get really complicated. So for example, I ran four games on this device. Two of them worked and two of them did not. So I did try to run No Man's Sky and Red Dead Redemption 2 like we usually do on here. No Man's Sky ran and it looks like it actually might perform okay on this hardware, but the video was so glitchy the game was totally unplayable. So it just wasn't feasible to make a proper analysis off of that game. Red Dead Redemption 2, like the Snapdragon X Elite we looked at a few months ago, doesn't load up at all. You can get into the initial menus and start going through some of the configuration, but once you get into the game itself, it just sits there on a loading screen spinning forever. It'll never load up the game. So very little progress has been made, in my opinion, on getting games to work well on the ARM platform. I did run two other games that were a little less impactful from a performance standpoint. One was the Dark Forces Remaster, which is a remastered version of a 1990s shoot 'em up with a Star Wars theme to it. That ran fine at a great frame rate, which is something I would expect out of a lower end game. And I also ran another game I've been playing with called Rogue Pilot, which is a really cool shooter. And it runs really nicely on a lot of lower end hardware. And it also ran nicely here, although there were a few little glitches uh, involving some of the menus and stuff, but the gameplay was just fine. So it's still very much a hit or miss activity when you're playing games on the Snapdragon platform. And if you are someone who does like to pick up a game every once in a while and play something, I don't think this platform is going to be for you. There are still too many compatibility issues that have not been resolved even though we're months into it now. So just take that bit of warning if you are a game player. The ARM uh, processors are probably not where you want to go. I did run the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test on this though, and we got a score of 1,021. This is pretty much where the Ryzen 4000 series processors were a couple of years ago. So very lower end performance for the, this day and age. You will get much better performance out of a current Intel or AMD based machine, likely around the same price. So just bear that in mind. And you can also see how the Snapdragon X Elite performs much better than the Plus does. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a passing grade of 99.8%. Unfortunately on this hardware, we did not get a temperature reading but it does indicate that under heavy sustained load, the performance is very consistent. This is not a fanless laptop. You do have a fan on board along with an air intake here at the bottom. And the fan is rarely on, and when it's on, you barely hear it. So all in a very efficient laptop here that will maintain its performance even under load and not get that hot. Now, when you're in laptop mode, you have two upward firing speakers on the left and right hand side of the keyboard deck. They don't sound all that great. They're better for conference calls than they are for music and gaming. Very flat sound, not a big range of audio. So if you are going to watch movies or music on this, you may want to attach some headphones for the best experience. And when you put this into its display mode, those speakers become downward firing. Uh, so again, if you're watching a movie like this, I would attach some headphones to get a little better audio quality out of this unit. One last thing to talk about, and that is its Linux compatibility. It will, at some point, run Linux applications and boot up into Linux operating systems, but at the moment, it's still not working. There is a version of Ubuntu now that will boot on some of these Snapdragon devices, but not this one. I did try it a little while ago. I could not get it to boot, but it does apparently work on some of the elite machines. Right now, Ubuntu is asking that people not format their machines just yet because you can't update the firmware on the Linux side. You have to do it on the Windows side. So there's still a lot of work to be done to get multiple operating systems to boot off of one of these ARM-based devices. There's no restriction really, it's just that they work differently and the OS developers are still working on bringing that to the platform. But if you did want to run Linux on this, this machine is not going to be the one for you. So overall, not a bad device here. I think if you are sticking to basic work and really need a lot of battery life, there's a lot to like here. The battery life is great, the display looks awesome, the performance is adequate for doing basic tasks, and you can even jump into some light video editing. Gaming is still a miss though, and I'm sure you might run into other compatibility issues 
that might be out there for games and other apps that may do something a little differently than some of the other ones that run in the Intel or AMD emulation mode. So altogether, it's still a compromise to some degree, but becoming less of one when you choose an ARM-based processor. That'll do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.